Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be going over unit 2 learning target 8. So we're going to talk about solving sub systems with substitution using multiple steps. So let's kind of talk about something that we talked about with um, elimination as well. And that's infinitely many versus no solutions. So first of all, just like with elimination, if everything cancels and what's left is a true statement, then you're going to have infinitely many solutions. So when we have infinitely many solutions, remember we write that as IMS. Likewise, if the things cancel and what's left is false, then we have no solution. So this is just the same as elimination, okay? The only thing is, is when we're doing substitution, it just might look a little bit different than it did when we were doing elimination. But the concept is the same. If we have something left that says 3 is equal to 3, that's a true statement. I have infinitely many solutions. If we have something that says 0 is equal to 3, that is a false statement. So we have no solutions. So let's go ahead and let's start by taking a look at number 1. So for number 1, I see that x is equal to 2y plus 2. So where I see x in the top equation, I'm going to take that out, and I am going to put in uh, the 2y plus 2 instead. So the 3 is going to stay as is, and then instead of writing the x, I'm going to take the x out and put 2y plus 2 in instead. And then I have minus 6y is equal to 6. So let's start by distributing in the 3. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6. And then we also still have that minus 6y from that side, and we also have the equal 6. So all I did between those two steps was distribute in the 3. So then I have 6y minus 6y. So when I go to combine those, that's actually going to cancel out. So what I'm left with is 6 is equal to 6. So that's a true statement. So I'm going to write that out as IMS, or infinitely many solutions. So let's take a look at number 2 now. So I have 2x minus 7. So since y is equal to that, I'm going to put that in for y in the second equation. So the 6x is going to stay as is. The minus 3 is going to stay as is. And then instead of writing y, I'm going to put 2x minus 7 in instead. And that's equal to 24. So what I want to do first is distribute in that negative 3. And I'm just going to distribute it into what's in the parentheses. So 6x and then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 7 is a positive 21. Remember when you multiply two negative numbers, it becomes positive. So that's equal to 24. So 6x minus 6x is equal to 20, is, uh, sorry, cancels out. So that's equal to 0. So then what we get left is 21 is equal to 24. So that is not a true statement. So this right here is no solution because that is a false statement. So then let's go ahead and let's take a look at setting so, um, for solving systems by substitution. So most of these steps, 2 through 4, we did yesterday. So the only new step we have is that we're going to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So it might not be set up as x equals or y equals. So what we're going to have to do is solve to make sure that that is the case. So that's going to be the extra step that we're adding today. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the best way to do that. So when we're taking a look at problems like number one, if I want to use substitution, what I want to do is I want to look for a variable that only has a one with it, like this x plus 2y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually subtract 2y from both sides. So then I get x over here is equal to negative 2y plus 15. So that means x and negative 2y are the same thing. So now that I've solved for x and I have that x completely by itself, I can do substitution. So I have x is equal to negative 2y plus 15. So where I see x up here, we're going to plug in negative 2y plus 15. So I have 2. And notice how I plugged it into the other equation. You don't want to be careful that you don't plug it back into the first one. And then I'm going to have negative 2y plus 15. And then I'm still going to have the minus 3y and that's going to be equal to, this should be an equal sign, 2. So next I'm going to distribute. So 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4, and 2 times 15 is 30. Then minus 3y is equal to 2. So negative 4y plus a negative 3y, those are both on the same side, so I can add them together. And since they're both negative numbers, that's going to be a negative 7y 
plus 30 is equal to 2. So now to solve for a negative 7, I'm going to, why? I'm going to subtract that 30 to both sides, and that's going to get rid of it on this side. So I get negative 7y is equal to a negative 28. Well, that negative 7 is being multiplied by the y, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by a negative 7, and I get that y is equal to 4. So now I know that y and 4 are the same thing. So what I need to do next is get my x. So to do that, I could really plug in for x into any one of these equations, but if I look at this one right here, it's already solved for x, so that's going to be the easiest. So I'm going to have x is equal to negative 2, and then instead of writing y, I'm going to put what y equals, which is 4, plus 15. So x is equal to a negative 2 times 4, which is a negative 8, plus 15. Okay, so then I'm going to get that x is equal to 7. So then my final answer is 7, 4 for number 3. So let's take a look at number 4. Again, we want to try and solve for the closest letter. So I see that this x already has a 1 with it. So the best thing for me to do is to add 3y to both sides. So when I do that, the 3y's cancel out on the left side, and 0 plus 3y is just 3y. So then for that second equation, I get that x is equal to 3y. So x is equal to 3y. So where I see x in that top equation, I'm going to plug in 3y. So I get 7y is equal to 26 plus 11. And then instead of writing x, I'm going to write what x equals, which is 3y. So then I have 7y is equal to 26 plus 11 times 3, which is 33y. So now my goal is to get my y's on the same side. Since this is a positive 33, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 33 from both sides. So 7 minus 33 is going to be a negative 26, and I'm going to keep the y with it. And that's going to be equal to 26. So now I need to solve for y. So I'm going to be multiplying by a negative 26. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by a negative 26. So 26 divided by a negative 26 is negative 1. So now, again, I'm going to go back up to the 1 that's already solved for x. So I get that x is equal to 3y. So I get x is equal to 3 times a negative 1. So instead of writing my y, my y is equal to a negative 1, so I'm going to put that in for y. So 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. So then I'm going to write out my solution. First my x, then my y. So negative 3, negative 1 is my answer for number 4. Let's take a look at number 5. Well, conveniently for number 5, it's already solved for y. So I can take this and I can substitute it in for y up top. So I'm going to take that y out completely and I'm going to put 4 plus x in instead. Minus 3x is equal to a negative 4. So then I have 4x minus 3x is going to give me a negative 2x which is equal to a negative 4. Now I want to get that 2x by itself. So I see that this is a positive 4. So in order for me to get that over to the other side, I need to subtract 4. So negative 2x is equal to negative 4 plus negative 4, which is negative 8. So that negative 2 is being multiplied by the x, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by a negative 2. And when I do that, negative 8 divided by negative 2 is going to become positive, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So now I know that x is equal to 4. So where I see x in either equation, I can plug it in. Well, it just so happens in this second equation that it's already solved for y. So I'm going to plug that in. So y is equal to 4, and then instead of writing my x, I'm going to write what 4 equals, which is 4. So y is equal to 4 plus 4, which is 8. So then I need to write that out as a coordinate point. First my x, then my y. So that's my final answer for number 5. So taking a look at number 6, I need to solve for a letter. So I can either solve, I always want to look for the 1. So I could solve this top one for y or even this bottom one for y. It would be a lot of the same thing. So I'm just going to take this bottom equation and solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And then I get that y is equal to 4x, and since I subtracted 7, I'm going to have minus 7. So now that equation has become this equation. So now I'm ready to do some substitution. 
So y is equal to 4x minus 7. So where I see y up here, I can go ahead and plug in 4x minus 7. So I'm going to start by taking my negative 4x, and then 4x minus 7 is going to go in in the place of my y. And that's going to be equal to 6. Well, negative 4x plus 4x cancels out, and I get negative 7 is equal to 6. So since that's not a true answer, that means that there is no solution. Finally, let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 7 and number 8. So when I look at this one, I notice that my y's already have same letter opposite signs. So instead of doing substitution, I'm actually just going to go ahead and add down the columns and use elimination because I already have same number opposite signs. So negative 4x plus a negative 5x is a negative 9x. Plus y and negative y cancel out. 6 plus 21 is 27. So now that negative 9 is being multiplied by the x, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 9, and I get that x is equal to 27 divided by a negative 9, which is a negative 3. So now I know that x is equal to negative 3, so I can really plug that into whichever version I want. So I'm just going to plug it into the top version. So I have negative 4, and then instead of writing my x, I'm going to write a negative 3, and then the rest of the equation is going to stay the same. So I still have my plus y and my 6. So negative 4 times negative 3 is 12, plus y is equal to 6. So that 12 is positive, so to get it over to the other side, I need to subtract it. So then I get y is equal to 12 plus a negative, uh, or sorry, 6 plus a negative 12, which is a negative 6. So then what we're going to do is we have our x, which is a negative 3, and our y, which is a negative 6. So you always write your answer as a coordinate point. First your x, then your y. Taking a look at number 8. Number 8 is already set up beautifully for us to do some substitution. So x is equal to a negative y plus 5. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put that in for x up top. So I have negative y plus 5. That's taking over the x place. But then I still have the rest of the equation. Plus y is equal to 5. Well, negative y and plus y cancel out. So then I'm left with 5 is equal to 5. So since all my letters canceled out, I either have no solution or infinitely many solutions. And as I can see there, I have a true statement, 5 is equal to 5. So that means that I have infinitely many solutions, or IMS. So that concludes your note video for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.